happy Wednesday. Um, I didn't really get a whole lot of stuff today, uh, so I was just going to kind of show short and quick. Didn't have time to dig through any kind of bins or anything, but um, everything I got was kind of modern. I just figured I'd show y'all and talk about it. So the first thing that I'm going to go ahead and get out of the way, I knew I shouldn't have bought this book. bought this for myself because it's so freaking cute. Didn't get it last week. This is the second print variant, and I guess I was thinking, I did read somewhere that these were put out in pretty, in pretty low numbers, uh, the second printing of it. And I was like, okay, well, you know, if I was already kind of interested in it because I see Jeff and I haven't, I hadn't really figured out or I hadn't really heard specifically. I'd heard the name Jeff the Land Shark and I knew about Gwenpool and her uh, shark backpack. So I just kind of made some assumptions with how cutesy all of the, especially all the covers that I saw were. I really should have just picked up the Jaws homage cover i think that was the first print i really should have just done that because that one's actually worth a little bit more than cover price i read through this book and i kind of regret it um i am all for like a cutesy story and everything but this is literally just actually i'm going to take this out um if anybody was curious and hadn't flipped through this yet this is about jeff the land shark who is Gwenpool's little buddy I really enjoyed Gwenpool, um, but what I was a little bit worried about was that everything that was connected to her was just going to end up being, like, raw or so random, um, and that's kind of what they did with this, and if you are into it, you're into it. I would absolutely suggest this for kids, but it's all just really short, like, one and two page stories about Jeff getting into trouble, um, and I'm trying to still kind of not whatever. Like this one right here is a story about Jeff getting accidentally put into the washing machine. And there he is having the, well, he's spinning. And then he's having the time of his life. And she's like, oh my gosh. And she gets him out. And then that's the story. So it's like a, just a bunch of like little mini things. If anybody did not know what that was about, I hadn't actually really looked it up. I probably should have. Um, I was kind of hoping that there was going to be at least, like, more than just, like, Sunday funny-sized little stories. I did think there were going to be a couple of stories I didn't realize it was going to be like that. So, anyways, it's Jeff. Issue number one. This is just a one-shot, so I guess I really should have already kind of known a cutesy one-shot was going to be something like that. Um, but I wanted to read something fun and funny, and this just... Eh, I mean, I might flip through it again. I, I flipped through most of the book and then, or like the first two or three stories and then kind of looked through the back and realized that was all the rest of the same. So I, even as somebody who really likes something that's cutesy, just, yeah. Second thing that I picked up was Extreme Venomverse number one. This is the Peach Momoko variant. This is the only one that I got and it was the only one that was really calling to me. This is the first, um appearance of the samurai venom here it's a uh, like alternate reality eddie going through something um i'm not really sure i haven't read it yet i just kind of was reading some blurbs but anyways this is the peach momoko variant for extreme venomverse but i think there's like i know this i saw two maybe three other ones while i was there and then there's like a one in 25 variant that's more like a a stained glass kind of bunch of different you can kind of see the the alternate reality eddies so um there's that next thing i picked up was ah next thing i picked up was green lantern and if you were out and about today then you know why it is because give me one second it is because the green lantern number one came with a green lantern ring this one's still in the um in the plastic so I don't know really how well that comes through, but it is exactly what you would expect. It looks just like the ones that came out during Blackest Night um, or whatever that promotion was about 10 years ago. I'm assuming it was the, the Blackest Night. So, um, Anyways, I haven't read through this. I don't know much of the story or anything. I figured that since this was like the number one in a series that they were supposed to start number one in this Dawn of DC um, for the Green Lantern that this might be an interesting place to start. So I did flip through just a little bit just to kind of get an idea of who 
This was um, because I got the Green Lantern ring and I immediately took it out and I put it on my finger and I was like, hmm, I don't know if I want it, one to stay in the bag and either way I want to get matchy rings. So I ended up going at the next place I went to. Um, this was the only variant of that one. Actually, this is not the only variant of that one that called my name. I do know that Sinestro is in here somewhere in the story, and there is a cover that has Sinestro, leather jacket, Sand in the Rain, and a dark alleyway, and like as a woman, that kind of calls to me. But I did think that this one was kind of cute. Um, so this is the one that I ended up getting. A lot of this story um, seems to uh, revolve around her. This is Carol Ferris. Um, who is a love interest of Hal Jordan and also Star Sapphire, who I vaguely remember, but I don't really have like a huge, a huge memory of. So this will be fun to read. Um, maybe not this copy, maybe the other one. I don't know. Stick this one somewhere just because it's, this is just cute. That, um, uh, anyways, <laughs> so those were the two I got so that I am. My fella could have matching green lantern rings. Mine is um, in the cup holder in my car because it's way too big for my hand. And here it is. I do not know if you can see the lantern core symbol. There you go. That's a little bit better. Anyways, it's a nice solid ring and it is way bigger than my thumb. So, you know, just beware, I guess. So the next book that I pick up, picked up is Count Dante, which is a um, scout comic. So an independent comic. And this is kind of, it seemed like it was set up interview with a vampire type of way. It's a reporter interviewing some man who had um, fought with this karate master called Count, Count Dante back in the 70s. So that's a super cool, like, I'm probably definitely going to read this because that seems like a pretty interesting, um, just like niche sounding story or whatever. But also I picked this up because... My understanding is, is that this is a pretty low print run book, independent, um, independent publisher with a low print run book and a story that sounds like it could be a TV show. I uh, felt like I probably had to pick up this Count Dante uh, issue one. I cannot remember if I read that this is a six issue series or not but I think that it might be um but anyways I'm assuming I'm not really sure who's who in all this I, I haven't really opened up the book yet but Count Dante issue one um like I said my understanding that this is a pretty low print run and um so it might be worth picking up you know just for that and like I said that's like a cult movie sounding story so right up my alley <coughs> So after that, those were all just cover price books that I picked up. Um, and then also this one I got for $15. This is the 1 in 25 variant of Batman White Knight. White Knight presents Generation Joker Volume 1 um, or Book 1 out of 6. This is a coming of age story for Bryce and Jackie who are... Um, Joker and Harley Quinn's children. My understanding is this is their first parents. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a leap here and say this is Jackie and that is Bryce. And I don't know, they look pretty cool. Um, I'm not really sure what the story is going on here, but Batman White Knight presents Generation Joker book one. Um, this is, like I said, the one in 25 variant. And I did not write down the name of the artist. Pan Mocha is what that looks like, but I'm not sure exactly if, you know, some people do a little shortened versions of their names. So, um, this, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say about that. All right, and then the last book that I picked up was the Daredevil number 11. This is the 1 in 50 variant um, by Derek Chu. So this is our uh, wayfish looking Electra here. Um, so anyways, this is... It's a little wavish looking, almost, um, almost like a manga style, anime style face for Electra, and she's got her long flowing locks. This is a really interesting interpretation of her. Like normally, you see her 
really skinny and um and pointed and serious like very strong features and that this is like a really softened version of her so thought this was really cool like i said this is the one of 50 variant by Derek chu got this for 20 dollars, which i felt like was pretty low because the last time that i picked up a one in 50 variant which was that batman 900 last week it was 35 so um i'm not really sure if that was underpriced or if that was just appropriately priced and maybe i just you know i don't know but it definitely seemed like it was worth uh the 20 dollars for a virgin variant of that electra and then I was just going to show one more thing, and that's something that I found in my um, one of my short boxes over here. I was looking um, online yesterday, or a couple of days ago, and um, somehow, somewhere, somebody was talking about this book. I was sitting there, I was like, man, that looks kind of familiar. Let me look through my stack of free comment day books. And I did end up finding this book. It is uh, Judgment Day, is, is Avengers, X-Men, is... Uh, Eternals Judgment Day. I think this was a preview for the, there's a, another Judgment Day storyline that I've kind of seen around. I'm not sure if this is a one shot or not. Um, I haven't actually looked a whole lot into this book other than my understanding is this is the first appearance of Brielle, who is Blade's daughter. Um, so anybody who went to Free on Book Day last year and hasn't really thought twice about any of those books or maybe didn't know or forgot what you had picked up because I do think I remember reading that when we got it, but it had totally slipped my mind. Just kind of look through your stacks. That's like an easy to forget type of type of thing with these free comic book day books, especially if you end up with a big stack. Um, so anyways, that was my, uh, that was my haul for the day. And I hope that you guys had more time than I did, uh, to go through the bins and, and find some good deals. Everything I got was for cover and everything was just kind of what was available in the short period of time that I was out there. So this week there wasn't really anything I was super excited about. So, um, yeah, I just kind of grabbed what looked interesting. And so that was just some couple variant covers and a book I didn't really enjoy. So hopefully next week will turn out a little bit better. Um, and hopefully you had better luck than I did today. Um, so I guess I hope you have a great day and see you next time.